Good evening, sports fans, and welcome to a rainy road stadium for tonight's 19-6A matchup between the Katie Taylor Mustangs and the Tompkins Falcons. Rain is pelted to the greater Houston area most of the day, and evening temperatures have been forecasted to be in the upper to mid-60s with about a wind at 14 miles an hour. Both of these teams enter tonight's contest with identical 3-6 and six records, but the difference lies in the district win totals. Taylor has only one district win, and that was against Maid Creek, while Tompkins has secured two district wins with the biggest win of the short existence of the school coming against the big brother, Seven Lakes, 21-20 on a block punt. My name is Derek Jones, and I'm here with Greg Beatty, and I am joined in the booth tonight to call tonight's action. TexanLive.com is your home for all of Houston's high school, high school sports action. You can follow us on Twitter at Texan underscore live and like us on our Facebook page. We're also on Instagram as well, so make sure to stop by and follow all of the exciting playoff action beginning next week. Well, Greg, tonight's matchup is going to have a 19-6-8. There's nothing actually at stake. Last night, Morton Ranch had a, a thrilling victory over Seven Lakes, 31-24 uh, to 24 to wrap up that fourth spot. Of course, Katie today won the state the, uh, district championship over Cinco Ranch, 24-0 uh, to zero to uh, give them that first place uh, setting in the district. Cinco Ranch will be second. Straight Jesuit locked up the third place spot. And of course, fourth place goes down to Morton Ranch. So in a game like tonight, when you really don't have a lot to play for, what's the motivation for both of these teams? Well, I think the motivation is pretty much, you know, you want to see which team has the mental fortitude to pretty much build for next season. You know, you don't want to give up on the season, even though their playoff chances are, are bleak and, and, and pretty much obsolete, like you say. You want to actually still establish your identity as a football team on both sides of the ball. You want to make sure that your players continue to work and continue to, to try to learn and just get better individually and as a team. So, so let's just see which team comes out with the right focus and the right mental attitude. Yeah, well, District 19-6A has been exciting all season long right here at Road Stadium. A lot of the action has been right here with a lot of good points going back and forth all season long. And TexanLive.com is the place you want to be uh, to watch all your action. So we have Tompkins receiving the kick. They're on the uh, north end. They're wearing their white jerseys, black helmet with the with their logo, with the black pants. And then you have Tom, you have the Taylor Mustangs on your left hand side on the south end of the field in their gray pants, gray jerseys, and uh, blue numbers. White helmet, of course, with the Taylor Mustang on the uh, side. Let's see if this this kickoff return unit could open up some lanes for these for these return guys to really really establish some great field position right off the bat. All right, Cordova Taylor lines up, get ready for the opening kickoff to kick off 19-6A football Saturday night here at Road Stadium. Siding action is almost underway and the kick is off. That'll be a floating kick all the way to the end zone, and that'll be a touchback to start the opening action tonight. Taylor's had an up and down season. Of course, they hadn't had the same success that they wanted to have last season. They come in the game with total yards about 26, 27, rushing yards about 1,200, passing yards almost 1,500 yards uh, for the season right now. Jacob Yor took over at the quarterback position. Uh, David Perkins had been there most of the season, and their defense has been kind of middle of the road for this 19-6A. Uh, Tompkins has had a lot of success this year. It's a big year for them. They actually may not have the winning record, but uh, once again, to beat a team like Seven Lakes, you set yourself up for a lot of success in the future. Well, you obviously know the talent is there. And we got Ryan Rank taking the pass, throwing it out to the right-hand side. Looks like that'll be a first down and 10. Nice 11-yard play to open up the drive for Tompkins. Well, that's the, that's what you call just a quick screen pass, and that's pretty much to get your quarterback and receiver off to a good – just just off starting a good note, a nice pitch and catch to open up the game. Just, you know, just seeing if you can pick up some positive yardage and a nice, easy completion to get your quarterback some confidence, send the ball, drop him to the receiver's arms, and that was a great play. And actually marked it a little bit short. It'll be second and about three. Ron Rake in the shotgun formation. Takes the snap. And he hands off. It's a big hole. And he could be gone. He's at the 40. He's at the 30. The 20. The 10. The 5. Touchdown, Tompkins. Great blocking by the offensive line to open up those holes, to open up that hole. Great job by the running back. That's Sebastian Terrell. Great job showing some great speed, 
so just some nice breakaway speed to just take it to the house. 65-yard touchdown on the opening drive for the Tompkins Falcons. That's how you come out and start your game tonight. Show some real good speed, some breakaway speed. Nice electric run right there. And the kick, the hold, and it's good. With 11.44 to go in the first quarter, Tompkins takes the early lead, 7-0 over the Taylor Mustangs, and you're listening to all the action right here at Texas 19-6A football, TexanLive.com. And Tompkins just took the first drive opening touchdown. Sebastian Terrell took it 65 yards for a touchdown to open up the scoring for tonight's Saturday night matchup with about 11.44 to go in your first quarter. And Sebastian Terrell is really their big play guy, and he showed it on that play. He's averaging 14.6 yards a carry. He came into the game with 131 yards total, and he just got a nice chunk on that one play. Adrian Espinosa kicks off the ball, and it's picked up from the Teddy defender, and he'll take the ball out to about the 39-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for the Taylor Mustangs. Well, that's a great job by the Taylor defender right there to just make sure he secure that football. Um, you know, nice concentration, setting this team up in great field position. Now, Katie Taylor has more of a balanced attack. They like to run the ball a lot. Let's see if their offensive line could establish some early, some early momentum. High right, formation, toss out to the left-hand side. And pick up about uh, six or seven yards, taking the ball down to about the 45, 46-yard line. And coming out for Taylor, you have Johnny Farrell at the wide receiver spot, Brad Vail, Brayton Kubeka, and on your offensive line, you have Chris Rogers, Connor Hay, Chandler Franks, Rodney Rodriguez, Parker Moon, and your big tight end, Cameron Ori. Second down, about two yards. Takes the snap from the back. Busts up in the hole, and it appears to be a first down. Great job by the defensive line getting penetration, making sure they stuff the running back for a very short game. Once again, let's see which Let's see who wins in the trenches. That's where the game is won and lost. Who wins in the trenches? Let's see who has the toughest, toughest um, um, strength to really break open this game. Jacob Yord in the back form in the I formation. Hand out to the left-hand side. He bounces out to the 50. And he's tackled at about the 39-yard line. Nice gain of about, we'll give him eight yards on that play. Well, that's Ian Beak, and he's actually a sophomore slasher type running back. And he's a very, very elusive type back who can really make guys miss. And once again, he's only a sophomore. So he has a very bright future ahead of him. Yeah, Ian Beak has had a successful sophomore campaign. Over 160 attempts. He's almost at 800 yards. He's already scored uh, over three touchdowns at about a 4.7 yard clip. Jacob York jumps back in the uh, underneath the center. I formation. Beak's behind the fullback. And the snap, hands off to Beak. Beak's up the middle. Bounced off a few tackles. Running hard, moving down, and will secure another first down for Taylor at about the 35-yard line. Great, great job of Beak by really keeping his legs turning, not going down at the first sign of contact, keeping his legs moving, fighting, and getting as many yards as possible. And as I look up to the left, I can see the rain starting to come in just a little bit. And that uh, may affect the game as we uh, continue tonight's action. It may play in the Katie Taylor's hands. Jacob, you're on the center. Turns around, hands off the ball to Beak in the out formation. And we'll give him a gain of about six on the play. And as you said, Derek Beak comes in with over 800 yards. So with a huge game, he could break the 1,000-yard mark tonight. 
And it looks like Katie Taylor is, is really trying to establish the run. They're trying to dominate the line of scrimmage. They're just pretty much just running him over the center guard area and just seeing if that line can get a push for him and he get through that hole and make some plays. And that's what he's done thus far. Yeah, Jacob Yord in the pistol formation. Gets the snap, turns around, hands it off to Beak. Beak to the right-hand side, off tackle. And give him a couple yards on that play. Stopped on the uh, tackle by Brander Pinkerton. He's one of the uh, defenders. Pinkerton, that was a great job by him. Now what, what Tompkins is going to have to do, they know that Taylor likes to run the ball a lot, and they like to use Beak most of the time. So they're just going to have to pin their ears back on defense. And as a defensive line, they're just going to have to stand their grind stand their ground and be tough and make sure they get to the running back. You're in the center setting up a short third down. Turn around, hands off to Beak. And Beak moves a little bit closer to the first down. And from this angle, it looks like he appears to have given it to him. And the rest are going to go ahead and move the chains once again. Yet another first down for the Taylor Mustangs. 8.35 to go. Well, the defense was able to stymie him for a short game. But nevertheless, it's a first down, as you say. So... B continues to churn out yardage and continues to be the workhorse early on. Jacob, your took over the uh, quarterback position. David Perkins had been at that position. Your was the wide receiver at one point. Your takes the snap. Pistol formation tosses out to Beak, and Beak's tackled in the backfield by a host of defenders. Great job by the defensive player, really shooting the gap, really really finding his way to the running back to stymie him for a loss. You know, what What um, the offense is going to have to do, at some point they're going to have to pass the ball. Obviously, they're, they're, they're driving the ball right now with the run, and as long as it's working, you're going to stick with it. But at some point, they're going to have to get the defense off balance by trying to pass or two. So if you're on the center, eye formation, turns around, play action fake, throws over the middle to the big tight end. And that will give Taylor another first down, a nice 10-yard pass. To your big tight end. Some of these numbers are kind of hard to see. Okay? And a little bit hard to see up here from our angle. But that was a great job. You know, the tight end, that was a simple crossing route. It was a play action pass that was set up by the running game that they've been establishing. And that was a great job just finding that open spot in the zone for that nice catch. Yeah, we give that to Brad Vale. He's usually the big main target for them. Once again, Jacob York takes the snap. Turns around, tosses it back to Beak. Beak runs up the middle. Bounces off a, a few tackles, and he's going to get down to the one to the two-yard line. I think that may be a first down. It's close enough. Well, that was a simple play where Beak is just pretty much plowing and bullying his way, as he, I mean, as he's been doing. Great job by the offensive line. They're continuing to open up lanes for him, and he's doing a great job of being patient, finding the right hole, and attacking the hole without any hesitation. First down and go. You have your... Jacob, you're under the center, almost in a power eye formation. And they have an early penalty. Referees will come together. And usually when you get a penalty like that, it's uh, usually a, first, a false start false. starting off. Right. That's what I'm thinking it is. They're going to have to back up more than likely. But it looks like it may be against the defense. I think they picked up the flag, Derek. Yeah, I think you're right. They may have waved that off. He gives the Mustangs a first down and goal. Jacob York is going to come up on the center. They're going to line back up in that power eye formation. Beak is in the back tailback position. Two tight end set. Jacob York takes the handoff right up the middle in the end zone. Touchdown, Mustangs. Well, that drive was just simply, hey, we're going to show that we're stronger than you all up front. We're going to establish our running. We're, we're going to establish our running game early and often with our big-time sophomore running back, and that's exactly what they did. And that was a great, a great job by, by Katie Taylor. Nice drive from Taylor to answer the big play from Tompkins. Kicking team comes out on the field to try to attempt the extra point. And we have the snap, we have the hole, we have the kick, it's up. And it's good. Once again, we're 7-7, seven to seven, 6.36 to go. Road Stadium, 19 6 a football. And you're listening to it live on TexanLive.com.
And back again, once again, TexanLive.com. Derek Jones and Greg Beatty calling a nice 19-6A action between the Taylor Mustangs and the Topkins Falcons. Taylor Mustangs drove down the field, punched one in. Jacob Yore on a one-yard run to even up the score 7-7 seven to seven with about six minutes and 36 seconds to go. First quarter. Well, Derek, that was a tale of two different drives. Taylor, they prodded, they wear that field, very methodical, you know, in their approach, and 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 was able to answer Tompkins' uh, big play drive with that big play for a touchdown. So different, two different type of drives, both ending up in touchdowns. And Taylor with the kick, kicking it off deep into the end zone, and that'll be another touchback. Yet another weapon for Taylor. Yeah, and let's see. Let's see which team. Obviously, both teams have come out with a lot of vigor. They're both competing, you know, so I know they know that they're not going to be in the playoffs, but both teams have come out with the with the right mindset, and they're trying to take it to each other. Now, let's see if they could – let's see if uh, Tompkins could answer the, the touchdown by Katie Taylor, and let's see if they can get another touchdown drive going of their own. And Tompkins comes out. Peyton Powell at the wide receiver. Logan Mursky at one of the tackle spots. Logan Brandt. Reese Russ, Blaze Fishback, and Shane Mobile. You also have Brandy Denny, a wild receiver. Ryan Rake at the quarterback, of course. Ryan Rake in the shotgun formation. Motion to the right-hand side. Takes the snap. Rolls out to the right-hand side. Rolling, rolling. He's getting good pressure. And he'll just throw that ball away. Actually, the receiver broke open. But with the conditions, I don't know. I mean, the timing was just off on that play. The quarterback, he's going to really have to find a way to control the football in this weather. You know, the rain is coming down. So, you know, it's going to, you know, the receivers are going to have to make sure they shorten their steps on the routes, you know, when they come out of their break. So it's, it's going to have to be some adjustments being made, you know, with the wet weather. So let's see which team adjusts the best and let's see which team could could really deal with this weather the best. Ryan Rake at the quarterback position. That motion to your left-hand side. Turns around, hands off on the quarterback read. And he stopped in the backfield. Nice pressure off the defensive end spot to make a, a two or three yard loss in the backfield, setting up a long third down play for the Falcons. Well, he actually came off the end unblocked. So anytime you're unblocked and you have a beeline to the to to the ball carrier, you, you know your chances bowl well for you. And that's exactly what happened on that play. He was unblocked at the, I mean, as he came off the edge, he was able to really penetrate the backfield and for that loss. All right, Tompkins comes out third down and long. Ryan Reagan, the shotgun, has a runner to either side of him. Takes the snap, rolls out to your left-hand side. We have a flag on the play. Throws to the left, and the pass will be out of bounds, incomplete, but uh, we did have a flag. Well, that was a great route by the wide receiver. He actually pushed the defensive back off. The defensive back was playing man coverage. He was playing inside technique, and it was like a 15-yard out route. The quarterback has to, I mean, the timing has to be better on that play. Even though it's a flag, you have to anticipate the break of the wide receiver, and that pass was just a little late. And it appears Tompkins is going to get a break on this play. The Mustangs were offside, so they're going to give them a, a five-yard penalty on that. Sets up a, another third down situation a little bit closer. Tompkins definitely has some plays in the passing game. They just need to keep attacking. They need to keep the defense honest by mixing it up. But the receivers have been able to get open. Ryan Reagan, the shotgun formation. Four receivers out, trips to the top-hand side. Rake fires back and throws it down the field. And it's a little bit over play, and it may be a penalty on the play. Well, I don't know if number 84 for Tompkins, which is Alex Chawanga. It looks like he was blocking on that play. I don't know if he was thinking that was a running play, but the, defense, the defensive back definitely had good coverage on him but I think they may get him for, for a, a defensive pass interference, which he actually didn't have to do because he had him covered well. I actually thought the receiver actually thought it was a run and he was actually trying to block. Yeah, it appears Austin St. Julian may be called for the uh, pass interference on the play. Referees are discussing it now. A lot of times it appears when the ball is, see where the ball is, if it's over the head, see if it was a catchable play. Absolutely. They waved off the flag. So that's and, that's what, and that's exactly what happened. They wave off the flag. There will be no penalty on Julian. That will set up a fourth down for Tompkins to come out to set up their punt team. 
And Jacob Yore will be back to receive the punt for Taylor. And Katie Taylor has had a bevy of injuries this year, but they've been able to fight through. Even though they're three and six, they've been able to fight through. You know, their coach has very intense practices, and he's just trying to keep them focused for the remainder of the season and trying to build something for next season. And the punch away, Adam Espinosa kicks it back. And he did not get his foot into that. That's going to be a very short kick. Taylor has great field position. This is, I mean, for a team that's that's built to run the football, I mean, you don't want to. Their thing is they're going to try to eat up as much clock as possible. The game is tired right now, but they've done a great job, as I've said, of establishing their running game. Now let's see if Tompkins' defensive line could step up and and – and really gain some momentum and see if they can plow through this offensive line for some penetration and some and some losses. That appears to be a 10-yard kick. Jacob Yor comes back, takes a snap, turns around, hands off to Beak. Beak may get two or three yards on the play. That was a great job by the defensive line, really. I think they're anticipating the run. Like I said earlier, Katie Taylor is going to have to do something to kind of offset that 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 mentality of Tompkins is just playing the run. They're going to have to do something and open it up, kind of keep Tompkins off balance. They're going to have to find a way to get to one of these receivers downfield. Taylor comes back in the uh, pistol formation. Jacob York gets the snap, turns around, hands off to Beak once again. Beak up the middle. And he may get back to the line of scrimmage. Tackled by a host of Tompkins Falcons. So basically they're just going to have to show more creativity in their offense. They're pretty much a handed off over the guard or tackle center area and just see what their uh, star sophomore running back can do for them. But they're going to have to find a way to be a bit more creative, as I've said, to keep this Tompkins defense honest. And so let's see if they can have a more variety to their offensive play calling. Big key third down setting up for Mustangs. Jacob, you're back at the quarterback position in the pistol formation. Motion to the left-hand side, takes the snap. Play action fake, rolls out to the right-hand side, looks down the field. And the ball is incomplete. Well, the receiver number eight, Hunter Tompkins, he was running a comeback route. Once again, it was inside coverage. It was it was it was like a cover three uh, coverage by the defense, and it was inside coverage. And he tried to make a comeback route, and he just slipped coming out of his break. Tipping to give the ball to Brad Vale. It's going to set up a fourth down, and it looks like Taylor is in their punt formation. Ah, it's a fake. It's a trick. There's the creativity. Rolls back. Brad Vail once again tries to throw the ball to the left-hand side, and it's picked off. Taylor down the side. Tompkins is tackled on the 45-yard line. Tried to run a little trickeration play. Brad Vail went back to throw as he rolled up to the left-hand side, threw it up in the air, and kind of hung in the air a little bit, and it was picked off by one of the Falcons players. Went down the sideline, and it's going to set up a first down and 10 for the Falcons on about the 44-yard line. Well, I said they needed to get bit, a, a bit more creative, Derek, but I didn't know they were going to try a fake punt. But, hey, you know, you're 3-6, and six, you're building for next season. You know, you have to try something. Hey, but that was a great job by the defense of really playing that ball in the air. The defender played that ball and did a great job of securing the catch. And it almost works as a punt with the conditions the way they are, but uh – I mean, it's the last game of the season. You may want to try everything you can. Takes a snap back in the backfield. Run the Wildcat formation. Alex Chawanga takes a snap and goes to the right-hand side. Gets a gain of about three to four yards. Going to set up a second down on the 48-yard line. So Alex Chawanga is the guy. They use him in the backfield. They use him in wide out. He's a pretty good athlete, obviously. And I'm sure they're going to try to feed him often in this game to kind of see what they have going in for um, for next season. He's only a junior, so they're really going to try to force feed him, I'm, I'm sure. Brown Rake in the shotgun formation. Motion to the left-hand side in the jet formation. Goes to the left, and he's tackled in the backfield. Well, that was a great job by the defense of really sniffing out that play. They were not fooled. And they showed a, they did a great job of swarming to the football, showed some tremendous team speed, and did a great job of pursuing to the football, hot pursuit, last on the running back for a short game. It's going to set up a third down in about five to six yards for Tompkins. 
2 minutes 47 seconds and counting in the first quarter. Road Stadium, 19-6A football. Ron Rake in the quarterback position. Shotgun takes the snap. Oh, actually, it's Tawanga. Takes the snap, rolls out to the right-hand side. And he'll be tackled by a host of Mustangs. Great pursuit, like I said. Hey, they're really showing a great ability to really swarm to the football. That was a great job by the defense of not being fooled. They realized they had a dual threat in to receive the snap, and, and that was a great job of staying home. The nice defense from the Mustangs is going to set up a fourth down. Taylor's going to come out, kick it, receive the kick once again. Jacob, you're back in the back. And you have your punter, Adam Espinosa, getting ready to take the snap. Snaps to him. Kicks it away. And yet another nice kick from uh, Espinoza setting up Taylor on the 28-yard line. It's going to be first down and 10 for Taylor. And as a punt return in a game like this where the weather is, is you know, it's raining and the, and the football is slippery and heavy, you know, you really want to be aware. And if it's a situation where you don't feel comfortable fielding that ball. You don't want to, you do not want to even try and field it unless you think you're going to lose too much yardage. First down 10 for Taylor. Turn around, takes the snap, pitches it back to your tail back in the backfield. And he's going to be tackled by a host of Falcons and will actually lose a yard on that play. Great job Beat by the, the defensive there. line. Front Number 56, line. Henry Archibald did a great job of penetrating the line and getting in on that play. Now let's see if Katie Taylor, let's see what kind of, let's see what kind of attack they're gonna come with. Like I said, they're more of a balanced attack, but they like to run the ball a lot as well. Of, I mean, obviously with. In the eye formation, turns around, hands off in the backfield. And a nice two yard gain on the play. Obviously with their back in beak. So they're gonna feed him a lot tonight. And uh, let's see, let's see if Tompkins can continue to just hold tight whole serve and um, see if they can get the football back without allowing any points on this drive. And Perkins back in at the quarterback position, setting up a short third down situation for the Mustangs. Perkins underneath the center, eye formation, turns around, tosses it back. That's a nice run off to the right-hand side. Pierce Beek's going to uh, gain a first down for the Mustangs. Great job by Beek of just finding the hole that he wanted to attack. Great job by the offensive tackle opening up that hole and he just hit that hole and, and it was a great run. Nice first down run. So you give him a first down and 10 at about the 41 yard line. And it's obvious, as I've said, it's obvious what Taylor's game plan is, is to run Beak as many times as possible. He may have 35 carries in this game. Mustangs in the eye formation, turns around Hands it off to Beak. Beak pops through the hole maybe for a gain of two yards on the play before he's brought down. Setting up a second down and about eight yards to go. And then that appears to end the uh, first quarter. Seven to seven, end of the first quarter. Road Stadium, 19-6A, TexanLive.com. We'll be right back. Come enjoy the heart of Katy, Texas, one of the most delightful cities in the Lone Star State. The best part? It's a short drive from Houston and minutes from the Energy Corridor. With places to stay and places to play, anything you'd like to eat, and an old town charm that can't be beat. Activities and fun for the entire family. Enjoy the best of both worlds in the City of Champions, Katy, Texas. For more information, go to cityofkady.com. And welcome back to Rhodes Stadium. 19-6A football between the Mustangs of Taylor and the Tompkins Falcons. I'm Derek Jones here along with Greg Beatty. Bring you tonight Saturday night action. Well, Derek, let's see if Marshall, let's see if they can muster some points on this drive. They're very methodical. Let's see if they could. And he takes a snap, turns around, tosses it back. Nice pursuit, nice tackle. At the line of scrimmage, and I think he's actually going to lose some yards on the play. Tackled by number 45 for the Tompkins, A.J. Tatamy. 
Well, when I was talking to the uh, coach before the game, he didn't say anything about the receivers. I asked him about his passing game, and he pretty much was letting me know that they're mostly a running team. And, and so, but, but at some point, one of these receivers is going to have to find a way to get open, but they're going to have to call the pass play, first of all. Shotgun formation. Perkins takes the ball, drops back, throws it over the middle, and it's right off the fingertips. Pass intended for Jacob Yore to the left-hand side. It's going to bring up a fourth down and 10-yard punting situation for Taylor. And that was a great job by the quarterback of stepping up in the pocket. He had his eyes on his receiver. The receiver actually came open. He just could not bring that pass in. The ball hit him in the hands, and he has to bring that pass in. Even though it's wet and rainy, it was actually a tough catch, but it was a nice pinpoint pass by the quarterback. And Peyton Powell is back to receive the punt. Snaps away. And the kick is away. End over end kick. And they'll let it roll to about the 32-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for the Tompkins Falcons. Make sure to tune in to Fox Sports Southwest Friday nights from 11 to midnight for the Houston High School Football Wrap-Up Show presented by Texan Drive. Join Howard Chin, Ted Johnson, Courtney Rowland, and Courtney Madden as they take you around the city with all the week's football action. The Houston High School Football Wrap-Up Show presented by Texan Drive from 11 to midnight. Friday nights on Fox Sports Southwest. First down and 10 for the Tompkins Falcons coming out. Ball on the 32-yard line with about 11 minutes to go. Tied up at 7 with the Taylor Mustangs. Shotgun formation, man in motion to the left-hand side. Snaps to Rake. Rake turns around, hands off, dives to your tailback. And he may get back to the line of scrimmage. Great job by the defensive lineman of fighting off that blocker, finding his way into the backfield to, to make a nice hit on the running back. And they're not going to give Sebastian Terrell a yard on that play. They're actually going to lose a yard on that play. It's going to set up a second down and 11. Now, it's obviously raining, but both teams are similar, and they're going to try to run the ball as much as possible. Shotgun formation. Rakes in the back. It's the back on either side. Hands off to the right-hand side. Bounces up through the middle. And they may give him a gain of three. And this is just the type of game it's going to be. It's going to be a slow, methodical game, a lot of running. And, and it's all about which team could – hold traction and really really stop the other team from establishing any kind of dominance at the line of scrimmage. And they'll give Williams three yards on the play, setting up a third and about seven with about nine minutes to go. First, second quarter, seven to seven. Mustangs in the Falcons. Ryan Rake at the quarterback position in the shotgun. Tailback to the right-hand side. We have trips formation at the bottom of the field. Rake steps back, tosses out to the right-hand side. It's a big play. He's at 26. He's at the 50. All the way down to the 40. That's a big play. First down from Ron Rake. Nice pass. Well that, well, that was a nice play call by Coach Tony Tamity. That was a situation where the receivers ran deep, opening up a nice lane for number 26, Avery Williams, to leak out into the flats. And the quarterback just made a nice toss, nice lob pass, making sure he got the ball to the receiver. Great job to receive that catch and get downfield. Nice scamper for some nice positive yardage. Well, that's a nice 25, 30 yard pass play from Ryan Rake to Avery Williams. Trips left. Ryan Rake at the quarterback position, steps back, hands off. Once again to Williams. Williams breaks the tackle. And he gets back across the line of scrimmage, maybe giving him a one yard play. Takes the ball down to about the 38, 39 yard line. Hey, that was the prettiest one yard play I've seen in a while. <laughs> nice job by Williams of juking the initial defender which would have made it like a three-yard loss. So that was a great job to at least get some positive yardage out of that play. 8.40 in counting. Second quarter, Road Stadium. Ryan Rake sets up in the shotgun formation. Trips left once again. So receiver down here at the bottom. Sets up on a quick X to the top of the screen. Oh, and he's tackled. Kind of a high tackle on the 35-yard line. Yes, it was. Once again, with these weather conditions, you know, you have to really be careful. If you don't have a passing offense as it is, 
a nice screen pass like that is also this almost like a, just an extended run, and that's a way to get the ball into your playmaker's hand and see if they could if they can do anything with it to get upfield and get some positive yardage. And that's a nice catch from Peyton Powell, setting up a third down in about five yards. And we got a quads formation set. Two receivers at the top, two receivers at the bottom. Ron Rake takes the snap, tosses out to his tailback, Williams to the left-hand side. Williams breaks a couple tackles, and he gets across that first down marker. And it'll be another first down. Topkins Falcons moving the ball down to about the 25-yard line. That was a great job by Williams to pluck that pass out of the air. Showed some really nice elusivity on that play as he's done this entire game, at least the times that I've seen him touch the ball tonight. Does a great job of making players miss. And that was a great job on that play. Now we have trips right. Ryan Rake to the shotgun formation, back on the right side for him. Takes the snap. Delayed draw. Delayed hand off to the left-hand side. Williams breaks the tackle. Down to the 25, down 15, down to the 10-yard line. About a 10 to 15-yard run for Mr. Williams. First down and 10, Tompkins. Once again, a great job of leaving defenders in his wake. Uh, finding the open holes and open lanes, but a lot of that is just all Williams. That, that's just him just being a nice runner with great vision. Showing the ability to have some really nice vision. He sees things that don't seem like they're there, and that's just a great job of him of just making something out of nothing. First down and goal to go, Falcons. Deep territory to Mustangs. You got Ron Rake back at the quarterback position once again. Three receivers set. Running back on either side. He had a man in motion to the right-hand side. Rake tacks a snap. Hands off once again to his defender back in the backfield. And it appears to be Williams. Williams will maybe gain a yard on that play, setting up a second and goal from about the nine-yard line. Now let's see if Tompkins can plow their way into the end zone on this drive. It's been a nice drive. Nice time-consuming drive. You know, you want to come out with six points if possible, seven points. You're down here into the red zone. You have to find a way to muster some points and get this ball into the end zone. It's been a fast-moving game thus far. Second and about nine to go. Three receivers set. Backs on the outer side of Ron Rake. Ron Rake takes the snap. Looks over to the left-hand side. Tosses out to the left. Peyton Powell gets it at the one-yard line before he's brought down. Well, that was a great play call because – I was actually just about to say, you know, they should try a slant or something to the wide side of the field with a receiver because there's no safety in the middle of the field. So you have to trust that your receiver could beat that defender one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's in the quick passing game with a hitch or a slant. And that, was, and that was a great play call to get the ball out quickly on a hitch route and see if that receiver could get that ball into the end zone after the catch. They actually had a chance to get a first down on that play, and that'll give them the first down. So that's first down and goal from about the one-foot line. Ron Rake once again in shotgun formation. Two backs to, to either side. Three receivers out. Hands off to the dive back. And the dive back is going to be stopped. He's going to be met at the line of scrimmage. Nice defensive play from a host of Mustangs. Great push by the defensive line. It's almost like they were anticipating Williams getting that ball. And that was a great job to really plow their way into the backfield for a nice stop. Fans, make sure to log on to TexanLive.com each and every week to vote for the Cavaliers Play of the Week. Then tune in every Friday night into the Houston High School Football Wrap-Up Show presented by Texan Drive. See who Courtney Madden showcases as the Cavaliers Player of the Week on Fox Sports Southwest. Second down and goal. Ron Rake back in the quarterback position once again. Shotgun formation. Looks to the left-hand side. Tosses up to, to Peyton Powell. Peyton Powell goes up, and it's going to be called out of bounds. Great job by Powell of bringing that ball in, uh, really, really nabbing that pass. But you have to give yourself room. When you run a fade route as a receiver, you have to give yourself room in that end zone. You know, he's probably at the – I would think he should have been maybe at the top of the numbers. And you have to challenge that defensive back inside and then fade toward the pylon. But you have to give yourself room. Ron Rake on the center. Takes the snap, tries a quarterback sneak, and I don't think he got in. And he didn't. The Mustangs hold. Great defensive stands by the Mustangs. Really showing some nice, some nice heart and nice toughness on the defensive line. And they're, they're really playing some tough football on this drive. That's going to set up a fourth and goal formation. It appears that Tompkins is going to go for it. 
Why not, right? I mean, it's the last game of the season, D. Why not go for it? And you're exactly right. It appears they're going to take a timeout, and we're going to take a timeout with them. You're listening to 19-6A Football here at Rhodes Stadium, only on TexanLive.com. Register online at CESPerformance.com for your sports performance program. CESPerformance.com has multi-month memberships and team training. CESPerformance.com has baseline performance testing included with every athletic development program. Schedule your athletic evaluation at CESPerformance.com. There's no cost or commitment. Be prolific at CESPerformance.com. Welcome back to Rhodes Stadium. This is Derek Jones with Greg Beatty. About four minutes and 30 seconds left to go. Tie game 7-7 seven to seven between the Taylor Mustangs and the Topkins Falcons. Topkins Falcons are on the one-yard line attempting to go for it on a fourth down situation. Fourth and goal. Well, this is a very tenuous play for both teams. Let's see which team can hold serve and really come out on top on this play. Round ranking the quarterback in the shotgun position. Low snap. Rolls out to left-hand side, looking for somebody to throw the ball to. He's getting a lot of pressure. Just throws it over the middle, and the pass is incomplete. The Taylor Mustangs have hell. Goal line stand for Taylor. Great job, but I think I, I think I probably would have went back to Williams. You know, you're at the one-yard line. I know they've stopped them on the previous play or two, but I would have just went behind that offensive line and just see if we can get a hey, one yard. I mean. The end zone, you know, all the DBs have to do is is play a certain depth in the end zone, and they did a great job of staying with the receivers and not not letting the receiver break loose. It was a nice drive all the way down to the goal line, just finished up just a little bit short. Mustangs come out in a tight formation. Quarterback sneak. Jacob, you're just trying to get a few yards to get off the end zone. When you're this deep in the, uh, the football field, you definitely want to uh, try to not uh, make any miscues, so. Just trying to get some breathing room, as you said. And, um, you know, let's see if Taylor, I'm sure they're going to try to use their workhorse, number 24, which is, um, what's my man, number 24? Ian Beak. Ian Beak. Once again, Jacob, you're underneath the center. Turns around, hands off to Beak. And he may gain a, we may give him two yards on the play. Setting up a third down from the five-yard line deep in Tompkins territory. And with the team that's, that's offense is predicated on the running game as much as Katie Taylor, you know, you don't know if this is a passing down or a running down. It's third and six. It's definitely a passing down, you would think. But with their reluctance to pass thus far, let's see what they call here. Your takes the snap, turns around, hands out to the right-hand side to Beak. Beak breaks to the right. Bounces left, and he didn't gain very much. And see, that's what I'm saying. You know, I don't think they really trust any of their receivers or the quarterback. They really don't have any confidence in their passing game. And so as as far as Tompkins is concerned, all they really have to do, I mean, they have to always be aware that a pass play could come. But I don't think they have any, any, any kind of fear of Katie Taylor's passing game. So they're just attacking – trying to get in the backfield and see if they can make a stop. And we have Peyton Powell back deep for Tompkins to receive the kick. And Keelan Winters takes the, receives the ball, kicks the ball deep. And it's going to be touched by a Taylor player at about the 30-yard line. And it's going to give the Falcons a first down at the 29-yard line with about two minutes and 30 seconds to go. Well, it's two minutes and 30 seconds, as you just said, in, in the half. Let's see which team could – let's see if this team could put together a drive. You have a short field. Let's see if Tompkins could find a way to get some points on the board on this drive. They have to continue to do what they're doing as far as getting the ball to Williams. Nice – well, that was a try right there. They tried to give him a nice screen pass on that play, see if they can get the ball in his hands and let him use his dynamic playmaking ability. But the ball just happened to come off his hands in this wet weather. And that's going to set up a second down and 10. 2.25 to go. Tied 7-7, 19-6-8 football, Road Stadium. 
This is Derek Jones and Greg Beatty once again on the night's call. Now, if I'm Katie Taylor, you know, I mean, I want to make sure, I want to do anything. I want to try to pluck this ball away or try to dislodge the football some kind of way, cause a turnover if possible. No snap, man in motion. Oh, that may be a late hit. Flags are down. It could be an illegal motion, but there was almost a, a personal foul on that play. Tompkins had a pass play set up. They were trying to, trying to get the ball downfield to the receiver. Once again, neither of these teams have an opportunity to make the playoffs. Morton Ranch secured that spot last night in a, a thrilling game, thrilling victory over the Seven Lake Spartans, 31-24. And we'll take a moment to listen to the ref to see what he has to say. And, you know, Derek, at this point, like we said before the game, it's just about, it's about ending the season on a high note, you know, really gaining some game experience and, and, and showing what kind of mental resolve you have by knowing you have – knowing you don't have anything to play for as far as the playoff is concerned, but you do have, if you're a junior or a sophomore on either of these teams, you know, you want to go into next season on a high note, knowing that you won your last game, you know, just with some confidence. And as an individual player, you just want to work on your game. You know, you want to, of course, you want to, you know, to be honest, you want to put up some more stats if possible, but you just want to work on your game and build for next season and just leave on a high note. They'll move the Falcons back five yards on the legal procedure call. And the Houston High School playoffs begin next week with Texan Live. That'll be your home for all your postseason action after agreeing to a partnership with the UIL and Fox Sports Southwest. Get your tickets to the state championships held at NRG Stadium right here in Houston by following the UIL link on TexanLive.com. Then follow your team on the road to the state championships at the home for Houston High School Sports, TexanLive.com. Now, let's see if Ryan Ray can show some of that poise that he displays from time to time. Let's see if he can show the poise on this, on this drive and get his team into the end zone or at least in field goal range. Ryan Ray at the quarterback position, trips right down to the bottom of the screen. Takes the snap and uh, maybe another false start on the Falcons. Well, Ray was probably getting ready to show poise, but the center didn't seem like he showed any poise. Mm. I don't know what that mix-up was, but backed them up five yards. And Edo backed him up five, putting him on the 40-yard line, 39-yard line. Setting up a second and almost 20-yard. Now, for a lot of teams who predicate their game on passing, you know, this would definitely be a passing down. But on second and 20, you may just try to get as much as you can back. You might get a ball to Williams. Shotgun snap. Rake pump fakes to the right-hand side on trips formation, and he'll just throw the ball away out to the left-hand side. He did get out of the tackle box. It was nice pressure from the Mustangs. And you live to fight another day. Yeah, he was under great duress. I think he was looking for a screen pass to his wide receiver to try to get the ball out quickly to him and see if he can get some positive yardage and get closer to that first down marker. But uh, like I said, he was just under great duress and, and, and heat by that defensive line of Katie Taylor. Ryan Rakes goes to the sideline. He gets the play, comes back into the huddle. Trying to design a play to get you 20 yards on this third down with a minute and 40 seconds to go, tied up 7-7. Seven to seven. Ryan Rake takes the quarterback position. Three men in the backfield, motion to the right. Turns back and runs, tries to set up a screen. It's picked off, and he may go. He's at the 40, he's at the 30. He stops to cut back, breaks the tackle, makes another man miss, and he runs across the field to the left. Back to the right again. Three, five, touchdown, Taylor. Wow, what a great run. Great job by the defensive back of really, really reading and sniffing that play out. He read the quarterback the whole time, the entire time. He was not fooled. And he plucked that ball out of the air. But what a great run. He looked like Deion Sanders on that play, Derek. That's a big-time interception. Kale Johnson picks off a Ryan Ray pass, goes down the sideline. For an apparent touchdown, but I do see the referees huddling up, and there may be some laundry, maybe possibly a block in the back on that return. Well, that was a great job of, of, of very 
very elusive and and an electric type run, but I thought he had a chance to outrun the the defenders, and I don't think he trusted his speed because I can't remember. I mean, I couldn't see who that was. I couldn't see the number who, but he actually walked him down from behind. But Johnson did a great job of of shaking him off and cutting it back and set up by some great blocking by his teammates. He was able to find his way into the end zone. Yeah, that was outstanding catch. Normally you're on defense because you can't catch, but he actually went up to the top at his highest point, caught the ball, and uh, – of course, the defense set up a nice wall for him. It was a nice return, but uh, we'll see what happens with the penalty. And that's the thing. As a defensive back, you know, I always tell defensive backs, if you get an interception, you think end zone, you think score, you know. Show some athletic ability, and you think if you can, you try to go the other way, and you try to get as many yards as you can or try to get to the end zone. Don't just catch the ball and fall, I mean, and fall down. There's a lot of defenders. They'll just be happy with just catching the football and acquiring the interception. But if you're a big play defensive back or a big play defender, once you receive that interception, you try and take it to the house. And that's exactly what Johnson did on that play. And as the referees continue to, to talk with the Taylor Mustangs, we remind you, make sure you catch all your high school action right here on TexanLive.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Texan underscore live. You can also follow us on Facebook. Offsetting penalties. Hold on, how? I thought that would be offsetting penalties if both of them happened before the touchdown. But In most I cases, uh, it is offsetting unless he stepped out of bounds and that's up at I'm the top. But I'm not sure on that. They're uh, yeah, actually that, marking it off. That's kind of a head scratcher there. He called personal fouls on both teams before the touchdown. I would think that would be offsetting. But... I guess that's why I'm up here and they're down there. <laughs> that was an outstanding interception for Mr. Johnson. Either way, giving the Mustangs another first down opportunity. Minute and 24 seconds. Game is knotted up at 7-all. Seven, seven well, Katie Taylor still has a minute 24. Let's see if their passing game could get it in gear. I think the weather has slacked up. It's still, it's still kind of wet, but, I mean, I've seen worse days. You know, the receivers and the quarterback can still make plays and the running back out of the backfield. They can still find a way to 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 make this passing game work. So with a minute 24, you have a timeout in your pocket. Um, you know, it's definitely enough time to get down. You know, you're on the you're on the 49 yard line. It's definitely enough time to get down and get a score and go into halftime with this lead. And we have Jacob Yor back at quarterback. In a shotgun formation, quad formation. He takes the snap, fakes the handoff, takes the quarterback keeper up the middle. And he bounces to about 12 or 13-yard gain on the play before he's brought down at the 35-yard line. Well, that was a great job. That was a great job by the offensive line of making that play happen. A.J. Tatamy on the tackle. Snap back to your once again. Turns around, hands off to Big. Big breaks up the middle. Give him about three or four yards before he's brought down by, once again, another Falcons defender. And Pierce Taylor's going to take a timeout, stop the clock with about one minute to go in the second quarter. And we'll go ahead and take a timeout with him. You're listening to 19-6A Football right here on TexanLive.com. Howdy, Egg. Thanks for all your support this past year. Don't adjust your TV. In support of breast cancer awareness, West Point Buick GMC is donating a portion of every vehicle sale to the American Cancer Society. So if you want a new vehicle, come experience the spirit of Aggie Land and help us beat the hell out of cancer too. West Point Buick GMC, easy to get to on the Katy Freeway. Exit Parker Cypress both ways. West Point is just a better place to buy. West Point Buick GMC, a better place to buy. And back at the action, Jacob Yor in the shotgun formation takes the snap, 
Throws out to the right hand side to Ori and Ori off the fingertips. Ori was trying to run before securing that catch. You have to secure the football before you do anything. He was actually looking upfield and did not nab that pass. You know, that would have been a nice gain. I think he would have been able to get that first down or at least close to it. But you have to secure the football before you try to run. Yeah, it appeared he had something working at the top of the screen. Once again, a minute and five seconds, third down and about eight on the 35-yard line for Taylor. Mustangs in the shotgun, three receivers. Your takes the snap, pumps fakes in the middle, rolls out to the right-hand side, fires down the field, and the pass is complete to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Mustangs. <laughs> Great job by your of, of bailing out the pocket. And when he bailed out of the pocket, he kept his eyes downfield. Initially, that was great coverage by the defense. But I watched the receiver as he cut across the field, and he saw his quarterback looking, looking for someone to throw to as he bailed out of the pocket. He went to the next open window and ran himself open. That was a great job by him of running himself open into the eyesight, into the vision of the quarterback, giving him a, a target to throw the ball to, and a great job by the quarterback of making sure he threw a nice pass, a nice pinpoint pass for that completion and a great run after the catch. Outstanding pass from Yor to Vail. Kick is up, and it's good. And that'll give the Mustangs the lead, 14-7, 54 seconds left to go, 19-6A football, right here on TexanLive.com. Welcome back to Texan Live. 19-6A football road stadium. 14-7. The Mustangs have just scored over the Tompkins Falcons. 54 seconds left to go. This is Derek Jones with Greg Beatty calling tonight's final matchup of the football regular season right here on TexanLive.com. It's a nice drive from the Mustangs to take the ball down the field. Jacob Yore hit a nice open receiver. Brad Vail the top part. And Vail ran in about 30 yards for a touchdown to give them the lead. Nice play from the Mustangs. Yeah, I mean, it was a nice job by the Mustangs of, of manufacturing a very nice drive and making sure they ended up with points. And a great job by the receiver uh, of getting that ball into the end zone. And the kick is fielded at about the 28-yard line. And he'll fall down, and the referees will mark him down at about the 33-yard line. First down and 10 for the Falcons. 50 seconds left to go. Now trailing 14-7. Where if you're Tompkins on this drive with 50 seconds left, I mean, you already do not have any really big play weapons on the outside. It's not like you're blessed with some big play receivers. You don't want to give Katie Taylor the ball back or you don't want to, you know, a turnover on this drive. So, so you want to probably be conservative. I'm sure they're going to be conservative. Just hand the ball off to Williams as they've been doing and making sure they go in at halftime down only 14-7. to seven. Ryan Rank lines up in the shotgun, tail back on the right-hand side. Four receivers set. Takes the snap. Looks out to the left-hand side and fires it just a little bit high. And off the fingertips. Off of Chihuahua's fingertips, right off his grasp. Well, Coach decides he's going to come out and go for it, at least probably on the first couple of plays. It's the last game of the season. I mean, you have yeah. nothing to, uh, to really lose once again. The fourth spot has been sewed up from the Morton Ranch Mavericks. Congratulations once again to them. Fourth and final position for 19-6A. The brackets are already out for Region 1 and 2. Make sure you check those out and find out who your favorite team is playing. Shotgun formation trips right, top of the screen. Turns around, hands off to the backfield. Williams to the right. And Williams may not have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Great. Pierce is going to be tackled by... Great job by Katie Taylor of, of showing some tenacity and really getting to that football, um, really really swarming to that football. But but um, at some point they're going to have to try to attack. If they're going to continue to pass, they're going to have to try to attack the middle of the field. But Taylor is actually playing a 3-4 defense, 
And and it's kind of tough, you know, with those, you know, with those linebackers leaking out into the flats. And the DBs are doing a nice job of not letting on the passing plays that Tompkins has called. The DBs are doing a great job of not letting the receivers get behind them. So let's see what they, let's see what Coach chooses to go with on this third and eight with 34 seconds left. Let's see if he continues to to pound with Williams or if he just goes for it. Like you said, Derek, it's the last, hey, it's the last game of the season. Uh, you know, but you're gonna have to challenge, but you're gonna have to challenge somebody downfield at some point. You're gonna have to challenge downfield. And the teams come back out on the field once again. Ron Rake once again back at the quarterback position. Sebastian Terrell off to the right hand side. Trips receivers up to the top hand side. Lone receiver down at the bottom. Rake fakes a handoff, hands off action to Sebastian Terrell. Sebastian Terrell breaks up the middle. And he'll get a nice 10 or 15 yard gain on the play. Set up a first down and 10 for the Falcons with about 27 seconds to go. Nice play call. Nice draw play. Nice job by Terrell of picking and prodding his way. Making sure he got north and south. South, Very decisive running on that play. Making sure he got the first down. And it appears to be another timeout. And I guess we're going to take this timeout with him. You're listening to 196A Football right here on TexanLive.com. Come enjoy the heart of Katy, Texas, one of the most delightful cities in the Lone Star State. The best part? It's a short drive from Houston and minutes from the Energy Corridor. With places to stay and places to play, anything you'd like to eat, and an old town charm that can't be beat. Activities and fun for the entire family. Enjoy the best of both worlds in the City of Champions, Katy, Texas. For more information, go to cityofkady.com. Welcome back to Road Stadium. Once again, Derek Jones and Greg Beatty calling tonight's 19-6A action between the Falcons and the Taylor Mustangs. Falcons back in the shotgun formation. Ryan Rake motion to the right-hand side. Four receivers set. Drops back. Looks over the field. Has a man wide open. And he catches that 35 that 30. He's tackled at the 20-yard line. Big-time pass play from Rake to Peyton Powell, number two. Nice 20-yard game. First down and 10 Falcons. Well, that was the... Well, that was a downfield play I was speaking of. <clears throat> I don't know if that was a busted coverage, but the, the receiver, number two, became wide open, Peyton Powell, and, and he actually got behind the defense, and that was a great job by the quarterback of recognizing that he had a receiver open and behind the defense. Great job of lofting a nice pass and getting the ball to him for a nice game. Ron Rake is at an outstanding season, does four over 100 com completions, over almost 200 attempts, about a 51% clip. He's already thrown over 1,000 yards. And it's on for a couple of touchdowns as well. Yeah. Ryan Rake, shotgun formation, four receiver set. Throws it up, lobs it over the middle of the field. And it's it's caught, but it's going to be out of bounds. And there is a penalty on the play. Maybe a pass interference on that. That may even be <coughs> offensive interference. I thought I saw him push the defender off. Let's see what the, what the refs call. But I thought I saw the receiver push the defender off as, the, as he was trying to make sure. Okay. It's against the defense. Oh, wow. It's a defensive pass interference. That's going to give the Falcons a first down and, and goal. Nice break for Tompkins. Now, let's see if they can punch this football in for a score. Normally, in most situations, that you attempt to run the clock out, try to go to second half. But Coach Tatamy, I like the aggressiveness. Tompkins, once again, they've had an exciting season thus far. They've had the most wins in school history this, this season. And beating once again one of the bigger teams in the area, the Seven Lake Spartans. That's going to be the the pillar win, pillar victory for that for that school this year, winning 21 to 20. And like I said, that's something they can hang their hat on, you know. And you can leave this game with a great deal of confidence. Great job of aggressive play calling on this drive, and a great job by the offense of executing. All they have to do is finish the job now and get this ball in from one yard out. Are they on the one yard line or what? Uh, it appears to be on the one yard line. Waiting for the referees to spot the ball. They're discussing to make sure just to, uh, to be correct. It's going to be probably on the two yard line from this angle. Okay. It's 14 to seven. There's 15 seconds left to go. Second quarter, Road Stadium, 19-6A. Falcons have the ball. Trying to punch another one in on the Taylor Mustangs. 
And you still have a timeout left, so you can actually run the ball and still have time for another play. Ron Rake under center, takes the snap, They're pushing everybody. There's a scrum, and he crosses the end zone. Touchdown, Falcons. Great job by the Falcons on that drive. Did not settle, were not conservative in their play calling. Decided they were going to go for it all on this drive and really go in with the bang, and that's exactly what they've done. Ryan Rake at the quarterback position. Quarterback sneak with 15 seconds to go. Touchdown, Falcons. They come out for the extra point attempt to try to tie everything up at all 14s. And you have the snap, the hole, the kick. It's up. A low kick, but it uh, goes through. And there may be a penalty, maybe an offsides on the play. I think that's offsides, and that's offsides. And if that's offsides, I wouldn't be too sure if I wouldn't go for two. <laughs> If you're placed at the half, oh, they're gonna, they're gonna take the points. Yeah, referees are discussing it. And they're gonna run a 10-second runoff. They're gonna go ahead and keep the points on the board. Falcons will decline that offsides penalty. Yeah, you never want to take points off the scoreboard. 14-14. Nice competitive first half. You know, you go into halftime, you regroup, you catch a breath, drink you some Gatorade, come out with a ball of energy in the second half, knowing it's a tie ball game, knowing your chances is just as good as the next team. That was an outstanding drive from the Falcons. Actually set up on the play from Ryan Rake over to Peyton Powell. Nice big catch, 20, 25-yard pass to the left-hand side to uh, set up a first down and 10. After a penalty, gets them down to the goal line, and Ryan Rake takes it over the end zone. Quarterback sneak, ties up the game 14-all with nine seconds to go. And we're waiting to kick off. Now, if you're Katie Taylor, you want to make sure that you secure this catch and you secure possession. You do not want a ball to slip out of your hands, uh, leaving leaving Tompkins with a chance to kick a field goal. Espinosa with the kick. Squib kick all the way down to the goal line. And it's being returned from by the Mustangs. Nice hole up the middle. It breaks the tackle. And he's brought the ball back up to the 36, 37 yard line. It's a nice return. Yeah, that was a great job of really finding the seam and really attacking that seam with no hesitation. He was trying to definitely hit a home run on that play. One second left to go. Interesting to see what the coach tries to dial up on this play. Sure, he'll probably just fall on the ball here. Go in, 14-14, top ball game. You're exactly right. It appears they're going to be that way. David Perkins takes a knee and goes down, and that'll end the first half here. All tied up, 14-14, Road Stadium, 19-6A between the Taylor Mustangs and the Tompkins Falcons once again, Derek Jones, Greg Beatty. As we go to the half, the West Point GMC Buick halftime all night up at 14 on TexanLive.com. West Point Buick GMC has Black Friday pricing now. Let the savings begin. For a limited time, get $8,000 savings off MSRP on 2015 GMC Yukon. Even 2015 GMC Sierra 1500s for just $25.9. Huge savings and selection only at West Point Buick GMC. Easy to get to on the Katy Freeway. Exit Parker Cypress both ways. We look forward to seeing you soon. West Point. Buick GMC. A better place to buy. Junior Lieutenant Logan Patrick. Junior Lieutenant Catherine Fuller. Senior Lieutenant Hannah Tillerson. First Senior Lieutenant Courtney Crest. And Captain Mackenzie Court. 2015-2016 Social Division members are President Miranda Willow, Vice President Isabella Almini, Event Coordinator Gianna Hogan, Historian Brianna Place, Secretary Shay Curtis. 2015-2016 line moms are Senior Christine Judd, Senior Janelle Hernandez, and Senior Megan Stoltz. The Spirit Girl of the Week is Celise Brown. New Girl of the Week is Casey Rose. And Dancer of the Week is Shay Curtis.
the field, the Tompkins High School Falcon Band. Congratulations to the Falcon Band for their 13th place finish at the UIL Texas State Marching Contest this past Tuesday in San Antonio. Tonight, we'd like to recognize and say thank you for the dedicated service of the first ever class of graduating band members from Tompkins High School. Christian B. Christian is a percussionist and has served as percussion captain for three years. He plans on attending Texas A&M to pursue his interest in veterinary medicine. Gabriel Bettencourt. Gabriel plays the clarinet in the Thompson band and plans on attending either the University of Texas or Texas A&M. Seth Burrell. Seth is a community player in the Thompson band and will attend either Texas A&M or Mississippi State University to major in computer engineering. Richard Caldwell. Richard plays the clarinet in the Thompson band and has worked as head drum major for all three years. He has earned consistent first division ratings at the UIL solo and ensemble contest and has earned spots in the TMPA various bands. He also received the OCHS Band Director's Award for overall performance in 2014. Richard plans to attend U.S. Naval Academy and will study mechanical engineering. Andrew Dent. Andrew plays the clarinet and has served as the Woodman captain for two years. He has been named the outstanding Woodland performer in the OCHS band for two years and earned a spot as a TMPA all-knowing band in 2015. Andrew plans on attending UT Austin to major in chemical engineering. Daniel Finley. Dan is a saxophone player and has served as saxophone teacher. After high school, Dan plans to study music education. Jillian McGuffin. Band. 